Nestled alongside Africa's stunning eastern coastline, Durban boasts a unique blend of breathtaking natural landscapes, year-round warm weather, and a rich cultural diversity. While the city is celebrated for its picturesque beaches and majestic mountains, lurking within those very mountains lies a disquieting challenge. a revenge and avenge to criminals and criminality. Criminals must not give in any space, must not give in any peace, must not give in any oxygen. Therefore, you rise, you go and put him to rest. As you leave him there, you go back and want answers. And those answers are for those criminals to go and bury theirs. For the past five years, Inanda has garnered the unenviable distinction of leading the nation in reported cases of murder. Inanda also has a high number of attempted murder gender-based violence and sexual assault cases. The sprawling region comprising 43 sub-areas is besieged by a pervasive shadow of criminal activity. Recently, a notorious gang known as the West Gang has added to the distress afflicting the community. Young, one Bamfunimali, <laughs> So many of them so far as I'm telling you, for the sake of who sees how I'm protect. I feel a bond and I, my mom shy is bad. Mom shy alone down, mom shy alone. Then what is it? I mean, we are from the bottom of life. What is the whole thing? Yes, can't. No good. I'm promoting a time. I'm not going to do it. Plan to start a war. But in a time, Mr. Piachi, we are well. Fear has become the unwelcome companion of Inanda's residents. I'm so scared, I'm so troubled in the trauma, the scared of what I'm doing. Even Manji, no matter is born. Tablespoon, sour pants, sing a two, good to wins a wooty spam. So I was with Shalala, the singer arm and then tongue. I wouldn't even go to more of a mantle and be a balega on a lake, good to wins a good pin of a wood, but I will cost you dinner, or sing a beer of a So in the end, our end of it is a certain Obi, I will call it a welcome to a Shalala. Oh no, it has on the Linda, I welcome to a Shalala, I relax. Females. Uh, walking at night, they, they shot them. The men who was staying alone at, at home, they just kicked the doors and shot them and, and just take everything. You know, that is a problem of facing right now. Mbongeni Pewa, who was born and raised in Inanda, has been a member of the Community Policing Forum for more than 20 years. Pewa says the area was not always like this. 
Yeah, in under is is a very good place. Uh, previous has got a nice history where uh, the people who, who, who just formed even the African National Congress the based here in Inanda. Uh, it, it is a well-known place and very respected place, but it's only this, uh, yes, who have just had this problem of facing right now. They're just killing, they are shooting it. And they are using a, a, a big fire up. Oh, you don't know where they get them from. They are very young. Maybe they are uh, between, between 16 uh, and, uh, and 10 years. That now, uh, the community of Inanda now, they are very, very scared to stay alone in this area. And uh, I don't want to lie. At the present moment, the policemen are trying their level best. But you, you know, if I can tell you the ratio of policemen, then can tell you that 1,003 houses is called wild police. That is like a top in the ocean. Compounding this predicament is the glaring absence of recreational facilities for the youth, leaving them susceptible to drug abuse and crime. We don't have sufficient youth facilities. Uh, we don't have even a, 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 a sport field. There's one of the guy who is a serious serial killer, but he just give a given a soccer. Uh, he will show you how to play. So I just play like an you know, umbrella, like all this, the, the soccer stars that you can take apart. But because that there is nothing of some sort, we can just make them to play the soccer. We just uh, uh, switch over to kill, killing the people. I think those are the things we need in our area, and we need them uh, uh, drastically because it is the thing that it can it can make the difference to our youth as well. There is also a stark contrast between the number of taverns and the scarcity of constructive spaces such as recreational facilities within this community. We have uh, 133 uh, children in Inanda. We have uh, 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 78 schools, a main primary and secondary school. I'm talking about Tavern, not about Chippewas. We have uh, only for a sports field in Inanda. A community activist who asks to stay anonymous out of fear of the West Gang agrees that not enough is being done for Inanda's youth. As an activist, what we do is to check the root cause of a, of a problem. Uh, in this community, we have a lot of youth who is unemployed. Unemployment rate is huge and it's high. Uh, hunger, if you were here earlier, you would have seen that there are people, more than 300, 200 sometimes, people come to get fed every day, Monday to Friday. So the hunger is there. Then that for us lead to criminality. And we have a lot of um, children, the child-headed homes that are unattended to. And we don't have that thing of Ubuntu anymore, where we said the child of my, of my neighbor is my child, I can share. We are not sharing anymore in the community. So for me, I think that level of unemployment, it takes a huge part. We once have the dialogues where we were talking with the young ones and they were asking us the same question, which is why you go to school? What is the reason for us to go to school? Because we have our elders who have graduated and they are sitting at home with their their graduation counts and do nothing with their certificate. So those questions, sometimes it's hard to respond to, you understand, because it's a reality. But that doesn't, that reality doesn't make, justify the fact that now I'm taking the stand of being a criminal because that my sister, that my elder sister is not working, so I have to be a criminal. That's not it. Now they are running away from the dialogues. They don't want to talk about it. Our kids are angry. Our kids are angry. I'm not sure where does this anger come from. They don't care if you are a grandma. They are grandmothers. They choke them because they want money so that they can go and buy these drugs. While the community grapples with the relentless surge of criminality, 
Allegations of widespread police corruption and serious misconduct cast a shadow over the area. I can say I blame the, 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 the police. They are not in our side at all. Even if the community members started the operation themselves, the police are not there to back them. The police are the one who will tell the perpetrator that we are coming. There is someone who gave this information. So the police department is really failing the community. The, 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 the police that we have in the police station has dismally failed us, uh, dismally failed us. Why I'm saying that we have people in hand that we can even take and say, this one once tell the police that we have a drug dealer over here and then that person went and killed that same one, same day and then the police were paid. We know very well that our police are collecting in these uh, small shippings that are around the, the community. We know very well that they go there, if you tell them that there is something that is happening, and then they will go there and collect only the cash, and then they will do nothing. So who are you going to run to? A highly placed source who is well versed on the criminal elements plaguing Inanda spoke to Eyewitness News alleging that some police officers are indeed corrupt and even involved in the criminal activities of the West Gang. The inception of these boys was via a certain police officer. He was then involved in a shootout with members of the political task team and he was shot dead. But he was not the only one. There are still other members within a couple of police stations within the north, mainly in and Dozuma, where we have a situation where there are members who have drug deals. And this has become difficult now for good members to work because now whatever they do, they cannot touch those drug deals. If they do, you end up not even being able to sleep at home because these boys will come and take you out. It's that simple. We have a situation now where there are more than a handful of members that haven't reported to work in more than 10 months. Not because they are ill or anything like that, it's just they don't want to go to work. But until when the salaries get cut off, then they resurface again. It's quite a simple slope. There are members that decide that they're going to go and raid a drug den and then go and sell the same drugs to a different drug dealer, that same drug dealer's competitor. Provincial Police Commissioner of KwaZulu-Natal, Ntlantlam Kwanazi, concedes that there are challenges, but maintains that the South African Police Service is doing the best they can under tough circumstances. We always receive complaints from society about the behaviour of police officers. Um, I think in the recent times, we, we had to take disciplinary actions against um, one senior officer at one of the police stations that you're talking about, whom we've since dismissed for abusing the state resources and also drunk, as, as you say. Um, so we cannot rule out many members being involved in, in the wrong uh, in, in, within those police stations that you've, you've, you've mentioned. We as management, as when we become aware of any irregularities or any any law being broken by some of our members or even misconduct uh, by our, some of our members, we take action. Like I say, we, we've recently dismissed one of the senior managers part of the management of the station for, for irregularities that he was involved in. Uh, so we take action. I mean, in the province to date, I think we, we have more than 30 members that have been dismissed from the service. Uh, n numerous of them are undergoing disciplinary matters as a result of their misbehavior and, and criminality and to some extent to where they get involved. So in and Zuma is not immune. Uh, we might expect that we will have some elements of criminality there. However, it would be unfair, uh, especially from my side, it would be wrong to just assume and talk about a percentage of members involved in criminality because that might not be the case. You know, there's quite a lot of members at the police stations and those stations that are doing well. Um, 
some of them they've arrested the most known criminals. Um, they've been involved in shootouts with criminals. So there's a lot of members that are doing good. Um, they might be overshadowed by the ones that are doing bad. Uh, you 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 talk about in under policing precinct. You in the urban area, we should be having at least maybe not less than I would say six seven police stations, and yet we only have one. So uh, that becomes a challenge. You know, becomes a challenge um, um, when you have an urban area in terms of townships that has got normal streets and it's got proper lighting and we're able to patrol and secure those areas. But then run in between the same township, you've got informal settlements that are mushrooming in the same area. Um, houses that are coming up in areas that are, you know, flat plains that you're not supposed to be having houses, uh, but people built in those areas, which would be maybe about 100 meters away from the road uh, on, the, on a, a, a cliff somewhere where the people build houses and they reside there. So policing in such an area becomes difficult. You never know, even if you travel on the road or not happening there. You can't use a horse to patrol there because the terrain is bad. You would have to walk on foot, but you can't walk on foot at night because you don't see. You might also get hurt when you fall into into some some uh, dangerous spots in that area. Then you have rural areas, which is standard dark, um, no roads, no formal roads. Uh, but fun enough, majority of our citizens they prefer uh, sourcing the land in those tribal areas, and they start building these massive houses. So what you ordinarily were going to find, the criminal was going to be stealing in the suburb, suddenly it is brought close to the criminal. So speaking to different government entities to help us make that place more easier to police. Uh, while we are employing other techniques such as IT uh, equipment that we might want to use, drones, I mean, although there's limitations, even if we acquire those drones, um, but if the weather is, is very bad, it might be even be difficult to fly those drones. But nonetheless, we were in the process of acquiring them. Uh, for me, if you were to ask me if what is the best way to police in under, I will say number one, um, we'll, we'll need to be assisted whether by municipalities in terms of bylaws, um, uh, laws of the country that will need to help us uh, by not allowing people to just erect shelters or buildings wherever they want to because the erection of that structure already creates a problem for us. So in Nanda as a township will have been there and, and, and designed with all the infrastructure that makes policing much easier. But the moment people start putting informal settlements in the mix and, and the municipality is not in a position to remove them and then crime happens in those informal settlements it then becomes a problem to police that. That's, that's the biggest thing that we have. So prevent it by not allowing these human settlements to happen in the manner that is unstructured, the way it's happening. That's number one. Number two, I think in the, in, by and large, um, we understand that everyone wants to be employed, job opportunities, but uh, as I've been engaging with business, um, there might be, it might be costly to go and set up warehouses and businesses in the rural areas. But um, what we see as law enforcement is that if you could have more of these business going out to rural areas, it then allows those people in those rural areas to get employment there. So they don't have to migrate and come to the, to the city. In the midst of the storm wheel, the people of Inanda continue to flee from their homes in a desperate bid to escape the omnipresent fear that has gripped their lives. There is no peace at all in the community. Most of the people uh, ran for their lives because they don't know what is really the agenda of all this. They really don't know. So if someone came to my neighbor, I thought they would come to my cell, to my home also. So I ran for my life and then I left everything. There are so many empty houses in our area right now because people are scared. 
is around half past six, everyone is indoors, not like before. I don't want to lie. I'm very scared at the present moment. And it's not, it's not me alone who are in this dilemma. But now, this thing is, it, it is it's irreversible. There's nothing that we can do right now to run away and just pull out the, uh, the cable of CPR. Because that, that can make the people lose their home, 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 home. Then, oh, we need to just go there and see all what is happening on the way. But our main objective is to try with all our best to reduce the crime and combat the crime drastically. And we are adamant that it will happen one of the days. Although we don't know how, how many people will be, will be dead by then. We know that you are on the way, maybe we're on the list. Maybe tomorrow we will just get the message. Oh, Mr. Kewa, the one we were interviewing yesterday, uh, they shot him dead this morning. As Kulegang, what is Kelly now near to? So as Kulegang, we must have told us just as good. At least we work on a social, we work on a social. It's a S8 NTF, we work on a UNAC, so as good, but it's a season, so as good, it's quite a pulling down. It's a little good. But our match, we're going to need trauma, especially on those first hand.